feel that um, learning is such an important aspect of of humanity in our in our life, and so I love to teach um, teaching human resource management and organization organizational behavior type courses. I think is particularly uh, meaningful to me. Uh, it gives students the opportunity to uh, reflect on themselves and see themselves in a new way, uh, particularly in relation to how they interact with others in the workplace, both in terms of their leadership capacities, but also in other uh, critical skill development areas that will uh, empower them to be better employees in the future. Um, and so teaching organizational behavior, teaching human resource management, uh, teaching organizational development and change courses and in training and development courses, uh, these really give students um, a skill set that they need to be successful. But I think more than a tangible skill set, it also uh, gives them the opportunity to think in new ways uh, that will develop them as a person. Um, in particular, I think my organizational development and change class is the one that I, to this point, have really just been most excited and passionate about. It's a course that uh, requires students to go out and work with clients in the community on semester-long projects where they receive actual experience as consultants. Um, my experience has been with this class that uh, students uh, are always uh, usually pretty fearful um, going into the project um, and over the course of the semester they have a, a substantial amount of self-discovery. Uh, they learn much about themselves and they also learn about their capacity. And by the end of the semester, not only have they done a fantastic project for a real-life client uh, that benefits from their project, um, but they also have grown and developed in so many ways, uh, much more than they would get in a class that was focused primarily on a text uh, or lecture-based. Uh, and so I try in my courses uh, to really make them as engaged as possible, um, involve them with the community as much as possible, and get the students thinking in new ways um, so that they can have the best chance for success in the future. I learned my love for teaching um, long ago uh, as a service volunteer uh, overseas. And uh, during that experience, I realized I love to interact with others and teach others and, and pass along some of the things that I've learned in life uh, through those teaching environments. Um, initially, I thought I would want to teach in uh, the high school setting. And uh, it, it only took a little bit of uh, exploration into that career field to realize that I, I wouldn't be able to satisfy my, uh, the, the uh, goals for my family uh, through that. And so I decided to focus uh, my teaching in a corporate setting. Um, so much of my background in education and work experience uh, revolved around uh, training and development within uh, an organization and teaching in that uh, context. Um, however, along that process, uh, I decided that uh, I, I really wanted to make my entire career based on teaching, at which point I decided to go on for a PhD so I could teach at the university level. And uh, ever since that point, uh, my focus, my sole focus has really been on um, learning how to teach effectively in an engaging way to help um, students succeed. And, uh, and that's truly my passion. I, I love to do research. Uh, I love to be involved in the community in other ways, but primarily uh, I love to teach. And uh, if I can help even a single student in a class to have those aha moments uh, that will prepare them for the future, then I feel fulfilled. I feel like I've made a difference uh, in the world. And uh, hopefully I'm able to, to do that on a fairly regular basis. Uh, I suppose there's so much in my life that uh, impacts who I am and uh, drives me on a daily basis. Um, I think my, uh, my family is probably the number one thing that, that uh, drives me and motivates me. Um, my kids are, are the joy of my life and uh, they, uh, they provide me with ample opportunities to learn and grow and rediscover myself. Um, and much of what I do revolves around that context. So within that context, you know, I look at uh, things that I engage with, whether it be literature, whether it be music, and, uh, and, I, and I always come back to, you know, how will this help me to be a better father? How will this help me to be a better teacher? Uh, how, how will this help me to be a better citizen? Um, 
I love literature. I love uh, reading um, uh, historical novels. I love reading uh, biographies and autobiographies of great leaders. I love uh, reading uh, science fiction, um, particularly uh, those that kind of stretch my imagination, require me to get outside of my current worldview and look at things in a new way. Uh, I love reading those types of works. Um, and I love all types of music. Um, I come from a background of, of music uh, in my uh, growing up years. And uh, today that means, you know, on, while I'm at work, I listen to music while I work. Um, I engage with uh, music and perform at church. I, uh, I'm part of a, a community choir and uh, love to sing all, all styles of music. Um, what does that give you? It provides a really important emotional outlet, I think, for me um, to uh, to connect with other people and engage with uh, with material in a way that can't be done in any other way. Um, I, I wish I had the skill set to be able to play instruments. I don't, um, but I, I do sing, and I and I love to sing, um, and uh, that uh, that really uh, again it provides me with an emotional outlet. Um, and an opportunity to connect with humanity in a way that I wouldn't be able to otherwise. Um, first, to answer that question, I, I think uh, it, it uh, is important to note that my background is a little bit different than most of the professors here in the business school. I actually don't have a business degree. Um, my undergraduate degree uh, was in sociology. Uh, my master's degree was in public administration, and my PhD was in sociology. Um, so I come at it from a quite a different direction than I think many others do. Um, and there are many, many people that have impacted me and uh, contributed to the way that I see things and the way I, I try to uh, go about professional go about my professional life. Um, I, I can think of individuals in my own educational experience that were you know, highly influential. Um, people at Brigham Young University, uh, such as uh, Stanley Knapp in the sociology department, Warner Woodworth in the business school, uh, David Charrington in the business school, um, uh, Jeff Thompson uh, in the public administration program, all very uh, influential in terms of helping me uh, refine my thinking, shape uh, shape. Uh, the way I, I view the discipline, the way I view uh, social interaction, and, uh, and the way I try to uh, deal with things in a professional manner. Um, in the broader scope, you know, looking at uh, uh, things as, a, as a, an academic, um, there are certainly others who have influenced me in terms of research. There are others who have influenced me in terms of professional um, outside of academia, professional endeavors, um, such as consulting experiences and things of that nature. Um, but I would say, first and foremost, the, the foundation of that comes through those um, that I experienced in my, my years of education um, uh, and those that have mentored me. I, there are many, many, um, both on UVU campus uh, and in our local community as well as uh, nationally and internationally, people that I've been involved with that have um, been great mentors and helped to uh, guide me along the, the path to success, and I'm very grateful to those individuals. I, th I think the main thing that I've gained uh, through my interaction with, uh, with these mentors, these scholars, these teachers, uh, has been kind of the worldview that um, that people matter and I think in within the business world that's a very important notion that sometimes gets lost um, and I think that's why I gravitate towards human resource management towards organizational behavior because these disciplines within the business realm are all about um, valuing people and finding ways to maximize their human potential uh, and if we look at employees, leaders within an organization from that frame of, and perspective, it's very different than looking at employees as, uh, as uh, tools, as peons, people to carry out orders. 
Uh, and I think that's something that I've gained uh, through the interactions with, with these other people, uh, that uh, first and foremost, people always matter. And when you value people, um, and when organizations value people, they will be successful organizations. When they don't value people, when they manipulate, when they exploit, uh, they may have success in the short term, but they will not have sustainable long-term success in a very hyper-competitive global marketplace uh, where they need to be highly adaptive and innovative, and, uh, and they simply can't do that if they don't tap into the potential of their employees and the people that are the most valuable asset within the organization. Well, I, there's a lot of different ways to look at it. Obviously, uh, companies can uh, look at labor laws, say, say you look at an American company. There are labor laws, minimum wage laws, um, safety. safety, OSHA, all sorts of things that will limit, quote unquote, limit what they can do, right? Mm -hmm. and, and impact their labor costs. And so many organizations have, have offshored or outsourced to other countries, many to third world countries, where I think we're, what you're getting at is using exploitative labor mm -hmm. um, uh, in third world countries because they can't do it here, mm -hmm. right? Um, again, I, that's, that's a reality uh, that happens. Um, I think the best organizations don't do that. Um, uh, I think uh, the best long-term sustainable organizations um, understand that that is a failed long-term strategy. Um, Again, it might be great for quarterly reports and quarterly earnings, or you know, the uh, to the minutes stock prices based on you know labor costs. Um, but it, when you're looking at the best organizations that have been the best over a long term, uh, they tend to be those organizations that value their people, and uh, you can still go into a less developed nation. Um, set up shop and give those uh, give those uh, citizens an opportunity um, to have employment and have jobs and do it in a meaningful way in still a way that's cheaper than here mm -hmm. um, but in a way that still not exp uh, doesn't exploit them mm -hmm. um, and so when organiz I think many organizations do that uh, and uh, that's an example of how you know they're kind of I suppose getting the best of both worlds in that sense and that, that's the goal um, that they won't just willy-nilly say, oh, you know, our quarterly report's gonna really stink. We better, you know, cut labor costs and, you know, uh, downsize drastically offshore uh, processes um, and just do that willy-nilly. That they'll truly look at the, all of the, uh, the stakeholders involved, the, uh, both the intended and unintended consequences of, of their actions. Um, and that's something I hope that I can at least get students starting to think about. Obviously one class here, one class there isn't enough to change their whole way of thinking, but if I can have some amount of impact on them to help them to start to think about um, things in that manner, a very nuanced, critical thinking, um, ethical perspective on the world, um, then when they find themselves in those positions, they will be able to realize that, you know, it's not just the employees in their organization that matter, um, but it's the consumers that matter. It's the uh, future labor resources in other countries that they might tap into that matter. Uh, and everything that they do need to uh, reflect that. Um, and again, there are many organizations that do that very well. There are many organizations that do that very, very poorly. And uh, those are the organizations that typically get uh, spotlighted in the news. <laughs> Student engagement in the classroom is really one of my primary goals, um, but it doesn't have to end in the classroom, and, and that's why I have them do projects with the community. Um, uh, I do lots of service learning courses. Um, I also work with a lot of students on research projects outside of class. Uh, that's one thing that I think is very valuable to them, particularly students who plan on, on uh, uh, pursuing grad school in the future, that they have uh, some experience with research, conducting research, presenting at conferences, writing papers, that kind of stuff will be invaluable to them. And uh, I'm limited in my time and the amount of, of time I can devote to that, but I, I try to, at any given time, have at least a handful of students that I'm working with outside of the classroom uh, in that regard. I'm also faculty advisor for several clubs. Um, 
such as Students in Free Enterprise, uh, Society for Human Resource Management, and others that I've been an advisor for in the past. Um, Students in Free Enterprise, that is a club that's all about utilizing business practices and principles, uh, concepts of free market economics, uh, but using them in an empowering way mm -hmm. to benefit um, people in the community. So we do community outreach projects where we teach people financial literacy. We teach them uh, how to be um, self-reliant. We teach them job skills. We teach, give them the opportunity to, uh, you know, we hear a lot about, you know, people who are uh, struggling that they need to pull themselves up by the bootstraps. Um, we try to give them the bootstraps so they can pull themselves up because <laughs> um, a lot of times they don't have them. Yeah. Um, we, uh, so we do a lot of these types of projects, both locally and internationally, um, and giving students the opportunity to engage with uh, a population in need that maybe they wouldn't otherwise have the opportunity to engage with, mm -hmm. uh, which allows them to learn about themselves and to learn and broaden their worldview, um, but also give them important project management um, experience and uh, some of those other types of skill sets that will be invaluable to them uh, moving forward. And then there's just lots of other co-curricular, extracurricular types of events that happen on and off of campus um, that I try to make sure that students are aware of, uh, some of which I'm directly involved with, some I'm not, but I just want them to know about so that they can engage in those opportunities. And uh, I, I try at least to, to make that an emphasis um, so that students understand uh, it's more than showing up to class. The, the university experience um, is just a step in the lifelong learning experience uh, that hopefully they'll have. And again, it, it's more than just showing up to class, but it's about being engaged with all these different aspects uh, within their community.